In 1870, the 15th Amendment was ratified, giving African American males the right to vote. After the Reconstruction Era, states systematically eliminated that right through legal and discriminatory tactics such as literacy tests, poll taxes, and intimidation. In the early 1960s, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee (SNCC) and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference (SCLC) took responsibility to coordinate voting rights efforts for African Americans, including launching a campaign for voter registration. Their actions led to the adoption of the Voting Rights Act in August of 1965, which struck down all discriminatory devices, provided legal protection to those wishing to vote, and assigned federal examiners to observe and conduct voter registration. The passage and implementation of the Voting Rights Act greatly increased the number of registered African Americans voting in elections and serving in elected office. The 15th Amendment, ratified in 1870, declared that the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by race, color, or previous condition of servitude, granting African American males the right to vote. During the Reconstruction era, blacks gained political power with representatives elected into every state legislature and the United States Congress. Beginning in 1876, however, southern states altered their voting laws to eliminate the ability for African Americans to vote. With the Compromise of 1877, whites were able to further eliminate black political power because of the withdrawal of federal troops from southern states. By the beginning of the 20th century, all gains from Reconstruction had disappeared, and African Americans in southern states inhabited an unequal world of disenfranchisement, segregation, and white supremacy. In the first half of the 20th century, many civil rights efforts were underway, including desegregation of schools and the armed forces, increased employment opportunities, voter registration, and an anti-lynching campaign. The Civil Rights Act of 1957 made the intimidation of those attempting to vote illegal, and the Civil Rights Act of 1960 sought to limit voting interference by adding federal inspectors and gave the Attorney General the power to initiate suits on behalf of African Americans being deprived of the right to vote. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 improved their prospects of effectively exercising that right by abolishing poll taxes. However, because these acts were not adequately enforced, there was still much progress to be made in voting, especially involving other discriminatory measures and the violent intimidation that was used against blacks attempting to register to vote. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference was created in 1957 to coordinate the actions of local groups whose goal was to end all forms of segregation throughout the South under Martin Luther King Jr. In 1960, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee was founded by students who had participated in the lunch counter sit-in movement. Although ideological differences led to conflict between SNCC and SCLC, they are both committed to expanding voting rights for African Americans. SCLC and SNCC began their voter registration efforts in 1961. Between 1961 and 1964, civil rights groups started voter education and registration projects across the South, but with little success due to voter intimidation. In the summer of 1964. SNCC organized nearly a thousand teachers, lawyers, students, and activists from throughout the country to come to Mississippi to work on voter registration. In the following weeks, 41 freedom schools were formed across the state, informing people about their rights and providing a place to organize. By the end of the summer, hundreds of white and African American activists and citizens had been arrested, and dozens had been attacked and injured. But 60,000 people had registered to vote. The Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party was formed with the goal of gaining African American representation in Mississippi. SNCC and SCLC, along with other civil rights organizations, pushed for federal action to protect the voting rights of racial minorities, despite the resistance of local officials. Their efforts culminated in voting rights protests in Alabama, particularly Birmingham and Selma, where the police force, who were closely linked with the Ku Klux Klan and the White Citizens Council, violently resisted the efforts of African Americans to register and vote. In March 1965, the SCLC proposed a march for voting rights from Selma to Montgomery. On Sunday, March 7th, 600 people gathered at the Brown Chapel AME Church in Selma, and despite Governor George Wallace's warning against it, began the march led by John Lewis of SNCC and Hosea Williams of the SCLC. Once they reached the Edmund Pettus Bridge, they were met with a barricade of state troopers who advanced on them, clubbing them and spraying them with tear gas. The unprovoked attack on the marchers was televised, and the voting rights movement gained national attention. In the following days, there were marches and demonstrations in solidarity across the United States and Canada. Bloody Sunday was the catalyst for getting the Voting Rights Act signed into law. 
The political pressure resulting from the violence made it possible for President Johnson to take the lead in re-establishing voting rights for African Americans. Johnson also felt pressure from civil rights leaders and their groups who had been lobbying for change throughout his presidency. On March 15, 1965, one week after Bloody Sunday, he addressed Congress with his plan for clear, non-discriminatory voting rights legislation. It is wrong, deadly wrong, to deny any of your fellow Americans the right to vote in this country. On August 6th, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was passed. It suspended the use of literacy tests, poll taxes in state and local elections, and other discriminatory practices to registration and voting. It required local registrars to register people to vote without discrimination and for federal examiners to be sent to conduct voter registration where there was a history of voter suppression. The act required pre-clearance for states wishing to change election laws in Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, Texas, and Virginia, as well as 21 counties in North Carolina. On August 10th, just five days after the passage of the act, the first federal voter registration offices opened since Reconstruction. 1,144 African Americans were registered to vote that day in nine counties across Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana by federal registrars. In Lowndes County, Alabama, blacks outnumbered whites four to one, but not a single African American was registered until after the passage of the Voting Rights Act. There was such a large turnout that more examiners were called in the following day as they had not managed to register nearly as many people as the number who came, even in these counties where voter suppression had been strongest. There was, however, massive resistance by the white power structure. To counter this, many voting rights cases were litigated, causing the electoral process to become more just. For the next eight years, there's still no blacks elected to the legislature. After that, with three of us in Hines County, that's only because it was litigation of that forced single-member districts in Hines County, and instead of having 12 people elected at large, we had persons elected by district. At least three of those districts at the time uh, were majority black districts, and over black legislators went from four to 17. Civil rights organizations who rose up to fight for voting rights continued to take responsibility and were active with voter registration after the act was passed, ensuring its success by organizing voter registration drives throughout the South. SNCC, along with other organizations and groups, felt that we had an obligation to go out and help implement the Voting Rights Act of 1965. So staff people in all across the South with volunteers and others working with organizations like SCLC and CORE, the NACP, local indigenous groups to implement the Voting Rights Act. After the Voting Rights Act's enactment in 1965, the law had an immediate remedial effect on racial discrimination in voting. The suspension of literacy tests and appointment of federal examiners and observers allowed for high numbers of disenfranchised racial minorities to register to vote. Nearly 250,000 African Americans registered to vote in 1965, and one-third of them were registered by federal examiners. Local voting registrars helped to register nearly 416,000 blacks by the spring of 1967. In southern covered jurisdictions, 29.3% of the African American population was registered in 1965. By 1967, this number had increased to more than half, 52.1%, and a majority of African American residents were registered to vote in 9 out of the 13 southern states. Similar increases were seen in the number of African American elected officials. African Americans elected as state legislators in the 11 former Confederate states increased from 3 to 176. Though there were still barriers due to intimidation, nationwide the number of African American elected officials increased from 1,469 in 1970 to 4,912 in 1980. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 was the result of both civil rights groups and the federal government taking responsibility to protect voting rights, and it was successful because local people exercised those rights. It remains one of the most powerful pieces of civil rights legislation, providing African Americans with the right to vote, gain elected office, and the power to have a voice in the United States government.